visiting with Mike Sandin, general manager for the Garibaldi. You dredge every few years. You have to dredge again, don't you? We try to. You know, one of the one of the issues with the boat basin, and we're talking about this. There's a lot of different dredging projects in the area. You know, the channel coming in here from about where the Coast Guard boathouse is to our entrance is a federal channel, so that gets that gets dredged by the Army Corps of Engineers. Port Garibaldi is responsible for dredging the boat basin itself. And part of the problem is, is we, you know, we get so much sediment being pushed down from the Miami, and it just comes in here and has nowhere to go. The last time the port dredged was in 2007. Well, shortly after that, the permit had expired, and it hadn't gotten renewed. So when I first got here a few years ago, three years ago now, we started the process to renew that permit. Um, that took us about two years to get our dredge permit through the Army Corps of Engineers, DSL, NIMS, and all these other agencies that have to have a say in that. And it wasn't cheap. Port invested about $100,000 to get our permit um, in hand. So we finally, beginning of this year, finally got our permit in hand, which allowed us, we only have a small window we can dredge, and that's from November to um, February. That's the in-stream time. That's the in-water work window. Okay. So during that time is, is the only opportunity we have to physically dredge. In the past, Port would go out and contract for dredging, and it could cost you know, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000. A few years back, the, the Coastal Caucus and uh, the Oregon Public Ports Association kind of bonded together. and The state purchased a dredge, and that dredge now is actually under the operational control of the Port of Coos Bay. So we've, we've worked with the Port of Coos Bay, and um, they're going to be the ones coming up and doing it. Port staff and them are going to be doing it with the state dredge. You know, doing it with a private contractor or open market, it was costing us maybe $20 per cubic yard. The cost of doing it through the state-owned dredge as pretty much our own dredge, we're able to cut that cost down to about $10 per cubic yard. Excellent. Um, so we should be able to get this whole thing dredged for about two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000, which is a considerable savings to the port and, and the district as a whole. Mike, I remember some years ago when you'd, when you'd take out, you could you could see bottom. <laughs> well, it's it's, it's, is it getting silted back in pretty bad? It, it is pretty bad. This go-around, so what our permit allows us to do is it allows us, we're, we're going to be doing about 25,000 cubic yards this go-around. And then we're certified to do 11,000 cubic yards for the next 10 years or nine years after this initial pull. We have some other work to do. We have some bank issues that we have to deal with. We need to get this one done so we can keep our channels open, keep the boat ramp open, keep things going. But we have a longer term plan. We have to reinforce the seawall along Mooring Basin Road because we have some serious underpinning there as well as the Bayak Avenue wall and the Jerry Creasy wall. And those are just rock walls, and every time they get cut up next to more of those walls crumble in. So unfortunately, this go around, we're not going to be able to get right up to those. But our, our plans here for kind of phase three of our commercial avenue, uh, commercial wharf project, we're, we're looking at reinforcing these walls and doing some other other work here in the port, some significant work we got to go out and get the funding for through grants and everything, but we have to wait until we get those walls firmed up before we can cut completely up. Our goal is to be able to cut right up to the seawalls at a 90 degree angle, um, but we have to get those in place first. That's, that makes total sense. Yeah. Notice some new construction out there. Is that the Poons, uh, uh, Tillamook? Tillamook Bay Seafoods, their building is... is uh, chugging along and they should be getting ready to start putting siding on here shortly so that's a fairly large facility uh it is it is and that's just phase one they have a longer longer term goal of getting another section put on there with some potential retail we've got uh, ice plant getting finalized in between there and where uh, deep water seafood is and then we've been, we're actively marketing the across the street there port of garibaldi is going to be bringing in um the through RDI Rural Development Initiative, Ford Family Foundation has been gracious enough to award a grant for us to bring in uh, an employee for two years to help establish a seafood market and start tying it in with the farmers markets. Um, so we're, we're looking, we're pretty excited about the potential uh, of having Commercial Avenue, you know, finish getting built up to its to its vision. And then being able to bring in the retail and some of that stuff that some of our buyers can do. You know, I, I, I look, and I've said it before, you know, as a Port of Garibaldi, we're, we're, we're a conduit for economic activity. And tourism is a huge thing right now. The recreational thing is a huge thing right now. Um, and, you know, one of our number one tourist attractions in Garibaldi, aside from the Oregon Coast Scenic Railroad and some of these other activities, is our commercial fishing fleet. Absolutely. And the... the the tie that ties that together are our seafood buyers here. 
So we're not going to be Newport. We're not going to be Astoria, or we, we ever going to try to be. We're going to try to be the best darn little Garibaldi we can be, and that's going to be supporting our small business folks and providing a place that people can come to the source to get the food. I think that's very true. I, I know that's true. Uh, other areas, they found that true with our dairy industry. Mm-hmm. That's why people come to this county. It is, and, um, you know, it, we did... We did. We knew this, and, and we, we kind of found out a little bit at the fair this year, too, um, talking to more local residents. We've been marketing pretty heavy to outside areas, um, you know, for, for our seafood and everything. And we were kind of shocked to find out how many residents of Tillamook County, how many of our own neighbors don't even realize that we have fresh off-the-boat seafood they can come right down to the port and get um, year-round. Excellent. So we're, we're trying to get that word out and want to make sure people know that... Uh, you know, port's open for business, and our, our, our merchants are selling fresh seafood. Something coming up on Labor Day weekend, it's going to be a busy weekend either way for you, but you also have a few extra anglers in, in port. Well, other than being Labor Day weekend, yes, the Oregon Tuna Classic is here this weekend, and uh, the scheduling just worked out that way. We're not not overly excited that it's happening on that big weekend because the tuna are showing up, which is a good thing, but that brings more anglers um, into town. Plus, we, you know, we got salmon starting to, starting to go off, so our... our and we always talk about these shoulder seasons, and this time of year for the port, uh, you're lucky if you can even find a parking place in the port. Exactly. Um, and it's really neat to see because we'll go through the busy summer rush, and then whenever he's going, buddy's going back to school, and the sportsman rush starts, and it, it's 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 neat. It's fun to watch. It is. So you know, one of the other things that we we've been getting some good good news on that's been tempered by events lately unfortunately but things are moving ahead with the south jetty exceeding our expectations right now um the port staff port commission um, a lot of our local and state and federal politicians have been really digging in deep our commission has been really involved um and a lot of our associations like the oregon public ports association pacific northwest waterways association um and, and lobbying for this but we, we finally had the Army Corps of Engineers, a um, great bunch of Portland district offices, uh, phenomenal support. They, but unfortunately, their budget is tied by higher sources. Um, so this year, um, everything, they're, they're, they've gotten a lot done. Um, they finally have acknowledged that the South Jetty has failed and that they are looking, they were originally looking for $500,000 for 18 so that they could finish the environmental documentation that they need to do and start the engineering or finish the engineering work. By the end of that period, they were going to be ready to go out to bid. After a lot of work by everybody I mentioned, they upped that request to $1.3 million so that they could, and this is for the first time that anybody can remember or know of, to get the dredge Quanta down here to start looking at the shoaling issues on the bar because that's one issue I've been beating up really heavy on. My goal and hope is that we can restore the federal channel back to the straight in, straight out thing. I've always tempered my optimism knowing that watching the weather was huge because I always would say, you know, Hurricane Katrina set the West Coast back a decade on on Army Corps of Engineer projects. Well, unfortunately, with all that being said, Harvey, uh, we we just had Hurricane Harvey, and our heart and our support goes out to everybody down there. But unfortunately, the the way the Corps' budget is, we it, it, this could set us back a little bit. Their plan was, as it stood, to have all the in, engineering and all, all already documents go to bid, but done by the again, end of eighteen and start procuring rock in nineteen, and hopefully start construction in two thousand twenty. So with all that being said, it is at the top of the pile. It is being acknowledged. Um, now it's just a funding issue that we just need to keep pushing for. So Mentioning Harvey, and it's so the devastation, Houston and, and the surrounding area there on the Gulf. Now, I'd heard that, that some of our Coast Guard headed down there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of our people went that way. or Usually when, uh, you know, they'll send some of the helicopters out of uh, uh, the local air stations. Um, but a lot of the, the ground folks that go, a lot of times they'll activate the reserve reserve crews to go. Um, you know, we've got a few reservists here that work in town that are, that are part of the Coast Guard Reserve, and they'll, they'll, as well as the National Guard. And those folks will all get deployed first and foremost because the Coast Guard, as small as it is, I, I, don't, I haven't seen the numbers, but, you know, I'm still, all my friends are still, and all my Facebook feeds are just full of some pretty incredible things that, that these guys and girls are doing. And... The Coast Guard is very good at getting resources where they need to be, but at the same time not compromising the missions here. So, you know, whatever anybody sees about the Coast Guard sending people from the Pacific Northwest, they need to be assured that 
there's no compromise in the response and their duties here to the Pacific Northwest. So. I've seen them turn out when with some of our our terrible storms, and and there's our Coast Guard on on 101 there in front of Fred Myers doing their job. Yeah, and you know I, I I've been retired now three and a half years, and I, I truly miss that part of it. Some of it I don't miss. Some of it was time for the younger folks to take over, but I, I, I still have a really soft spot for that. As always, you're you're moving forward on on more plans for for our for our port of Garibaldi, and and uh, I appreciate the the vision that comes out of this port. Well, we're trying. You know, I, I just wish our checkbook matched our vision, but uh, you know, instead of we would love to write a blank check and get it all done tomorrow, um, but we we really we have to temper our view and we have to pace ourselves and. Um, I think, you know, my goal, and we got a phenomenal staff right now. We've got some great commissioners. We've got a great relationship with our, our you know, with Bay City and Garibaldi. And um, I think the vision for this whole North Tillamook Bay area is, is, is sound. I think it's great. Um, you know, we've got some good stuff going for us. Uh, we're, we're a huge supporter of the Oregon Coast Scenic Railroad. They're, they're their numbers are up and they continue to increase. They're, they're you know, a powerful player that I think a lot of our merchants and a lot of our economy up here relies upon, as well as, you know, some of these other activities. We, we're big, like I said, big supporter of rails and trails. We know there's some, we know there's a lot of controversy in there and there's a, there's a lot of issues that still need to be resolved because there's, there's always going to be some difficult spots. But um, uh, I think the future for this area with all these players in place is, is huge and we're pretty excited about it. I, I've always always kind of operated on the mantra of trying to leave somewhere better than I found it and I think all the staff shares that right now so we're you know we're hoping that when we hand when we're ready to hand the Port of Garibaldi off to the next generation that it's it's far better than we found it and continuing to grow while maintaining its small charm thank you